Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday Live with John Cogley, who is, by the way, in Philippines now, in Cebu, uh, for a couple of days. Um, this is their fifth leg, if I'm not mistaken. Fifth or, yeah, fifth. Went to Malaysia first. Not fifth, in fact. Uh, Malaysia first, then they went to Vietnam, then now in Philippines, and then going to Singapore, and then back to base. Uh, but today, we're going to have Buffy Kaufman, one of our brand ambassadors, to help us uh, be the host for today's session, joined by um, wonderful, another brand ambassador all the way from Greece. So without much ado, I'm going to pass it on to you, Buffy. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for Friday Live. We have one of the most loved brand ambassadors amongst the Daniel Smith family today, Johnny. He'll be painting from Greece. And not only do we all love him and are so happy to have him back on, but many of the brand ambassadors actually collect his artwork as well. So Ethel, is it possible to highlight a couple of the collections that we've had? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gabriel and Letty and Stella. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna do, okay, why not we do the spotlight first of the collections by fellow brand ambassadors. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay. So I'll start with Leticia here. And then I, did I just see Gabriel? Okay, Gabriel and Stella, Stella. Yes, Stella, please. Thank you. There you go. That's okay. great. <laughs> I beautiful. just love that. It wow. shows just how beautiful your portraiture is and how you capture the beauty of your subject so wonderfully. Thank you, Thank you beautiful. Everybody. You are too good. <laughs> <laughs> I just beautiful. love that. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. We have, we have artists from all over the world tuning in today. And Ethel has prepared a slideshow as well of Johnny's work. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll do a share screen. Thank you. There you go. If you have not followed Johnny on Instagram, he's there, of course. His handle is there, Johnny underscore Patra. And also on Facebook. His handle there is johnny.patramanis. So as usual, we highlight a couple of artworks uh, by our guest artist. And with Johnny, we will start with this piece here. Would you like to share a line or two about this piece, Johnny? Yeah, this was actually one that uh, I did for Fabriano in Aquarello 2022. And uh, it's now in the Watercolor Museum in uh, Fabriano. It's wow. a picture of a Greek photographer that I really like. And I tried to make a painting. And that was the result. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Oh, this is Nisa. She's one of my friends when I was living in Italy. And this painting was a part of the Royal Scottish Watercolor Exhibition. And I was very happy about that, that I got in and I could show my painting to Scotland too. You're beautiful, Yanis. Thank yes. you. Mm. This wow. was the second painting that was in the same exhibition. This was actually a sketch that I did for a bigger one, but I really liked the result. So I said, hey, why not give it a shot for an exhibition? And it got in. So yay. Wow. <laughs> yay. This was my first pa pa palette. And uh, this is actually my dot card, I think, uh, plus like six colors. I really loved this uh, palette and I still use it. Yeah. Mm, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I also do some animal paintings. I really love cats. I live with cats. 
So yeah, I want to express that too. <laughs> A great expression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this was a painting for Fabriano in Aquarello 2023. It's from Tinos Island here in uh, Greece. It's a photo of my cousin Tuk. I I loved it. I love the atmosphere, the shadows. So I give it a shot. Took a lot of example from George Politis from Greece as well. Yeah, and this was the result. Very nice. That's the last image on this slide. Thank you, Ethel. Welcome. So Johnny, is it okay if people ask questions as you paint, or would you like to wait till the end? No, no, of course, of course, yeah. Okay, we have Ashley and Gabriel and Anna. I think they can help us with questions from Facebook. And if you'd like to go ahead and get started. Yeah, sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's switch the cameras. All right. So I'm gonna try to do a portrait. It's a quarter seat. The paper is Artis Cold Press. Uh, 300 grams. I already wet the back of the paper, but the front is still dry. So I'm going to start with a really light wash of uh, buff titanium. So you guys probably won't be able to see it on the camera because it's really light. I just go and start to wet my figure loosely. Everyone, Johnny has quite a bit of colors in his palette. So I went ahead and posted in the chat on both Facebook and Zoom. Great, thank you. Yep. And what is the name of your model today, Johnny? Uh, her name is Emma and Emma. she's from the US from California. Thank you. What paper do you use, uh, Yanni? It's Ar Artis Cold Press, 300 grams. Fabri Fabri Fabriano Artistico? No, no, Artis. Artist? Yeah. Hmm. But I use all of them. And Fa Fabriano, Sanders Waterford, Magnani. But at this time, it's, it's, it's an artist one. I think he's saying arches, or if you're in France, arche. Arche, paper. yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh Sorry. okay. I, I heard artist, and I said, hmm, I haven't heard of that. <laughs> so. it, it's the Greek name. George is on Johnny, and he said in the chat, let's go, Johnny. Let's go, George. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now it, it's still wet. So, and I'm gonna use some burnt sienna light. It's one of my favorite colors for a skin tone. Johnny, how do you approach drawing your portrait figures? Yeah. Um, 
this is a tricky one. <laughs> well, mm. first I I like to do a pencil sketch. I I've been very thorough, just checking all of the details. And if I make it right, then I project it and make it bigger for for the painting. Because if I work on a smaller fo format, it's easier to make it right. If you're trying, yeah. Look at that already. There's so much beauty there. And now I'm just ha highlighting the eyes, the nose more, a little bit of the lips. I I clean my brush and with fresh water I just soften the edges a little bit more or spread out the color. Johnny, did you study portraiture when you were getting your degree or did you study under a master or have you self-taught? Uh, well, I've studied fine arts. I have a master's degree, but uh, you can choose whatever you want to do for your thesis. I just always wanted to paint uh, portraits, so that's what I did. Nice, thank you. You're welcome. You handle so well the so well the wetness of the paper and the pigment on your yeah. brush. Um, yeah, and it, that takes a lot of practice. Yeah, and and that's the whole point. Just practice, 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 and someday you will find out what works for you. Yeah. Johnny, is that a single pigment color, or do you have several colors mixed together for that? My first layer was Bafta. I titanium but very light and the second one is burnt sienna light so i mixed my two colors on the paper you you layer them yeah yeah okay now i'm gonna mix on on the palette uh, I really like a new shadow value that I enjoy. It's a Van Dyke brown with carbazol violet. I'm sorry that you guys can't can see my palette. But it's a big one. <laughs> All right. Johnny, what was the name of the award that you got at Fabriano year before last, where they gave you the, yeah, the was, paper uh, that you could see through? It was the it was a recognition for a talented artist who has done a special service to the watercolor world. <laughs> it's a, a big one as a title, but <laughs> yeah. Well deserved. Thank you.
and it was great because I had like all of you guys there we, with me. It was an amazing, an amazing experience to be there with all of you guys. There was not a dry eye in the room. Everybody mm -hmm. had joyful tears. Oh, that's wonderful. Again, this layer is Van Dyke Brown with Carbazol Violet. But it's, uh, again, it's a light one. I use a lot of water. Hello, I just wanted to make a comment that your your use of black is very good. I'm always afraid to use black. Is there a, did you have to get over that feeling or did it just, you just gravitated right away to using that color? Usually they say, oh, don't put in black. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, just a question. Well, I was afraid, but again, not, nothing wrong can, happened. I mean, it's uh, just a painting. It's not like I, I am a doctor and I'm trying something new on a um, patient. So if I don't like it, I will throw it away and it's just fine. But it's all, always good to try things that scare you or I, I don't know, you, you have a fresh idea, but you are not sure. It's just a painting. Yes, thank you. Good to remember. And always when, when I apply the color, then I clean my brush and rework it with clear wa water to soften it a, a, a little bit more. So you're working all at once, right? Keeping it while it's still wet, continuing to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but soon I uh, will have to dry it because I don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. I will need to work on, on the ice on dry paper. Mm -hmm. Maybe give a little bit more chroma to, to the nose here. Obviously, on different screens, it looked different because I don't see any black on my screen. It's so this is still the Carbazol. Van Dyck and uh, Carbazol, but mm -hmm. I would use black as, as well. Whatever it works. If it works, we will see. Okay, I'm gonna use my hair dryer now. For those of you that would like to see more of Johnny's work, be sure to check out his Instagram. He's very active on there. And when you go through, you can see just how versatile his work is and how beautiful his portraiture is.
Now, Johnny, do you make mix your own blocks or do you use one of them out of the tube? Uh, so this one for the shadows, it's it's not actually a black. It's a violet brown, let's say. It's a Van Dyke with carbazole violet. So it's more like a gray, gray is violet. Because I nor I normally would use for this stage uh, shadow violet, but I like to change things up. So yeah, I I mixed it with Van Dyke and Carvazol. And now I'm gonna move on to the eyes. I'm gonna start with the uh, irises, bronzite, because it gives a nice little sp spark to the eyes. Donnie, there's a question in the chat. Yep. If you are painting from memory or from a reference photo. So this is a reference fo photo. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Gosh. Beautiful. I've tried the memory thing. It's so hard. So never again <laughs> maybe for a cat but maybe not so much for yeah yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> okay so bronzite then i go with a little bit of um burnt amber And some PM on diet. Okay, now let's go to our blacks. I will, I will use um, ivory black. One of the things I really love about your work, Johnny, is how you have a mastery of the pigments of each color, how to, in a way, show the watercolor paint at its best. For instance, along her shoulder there, how the colors are blending and soft and smooth. It's just so... Thank you very so, much. It's so nice to see an artist that really showcases how beautiful watercolor is but yet you still capture enough realism you know so it's it's exciting to get to see you paint i mean uh i i always say that i paint loosely but with a lot of with a lot of details to so what i want i'm 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 not sure if this came out from boredom and i don't want to do the whole detailed thing but I really enjoy this style of painting. 
Thank you. And this particular pose, it's a little bit tricky because uh, I don't have a lot of shadows on the nose. And if you don't have a shadow on the bottom part, it looks like it's flat. Mm. So that's why I, I put a lot of orange here to make it more vibrant. Johnny, your other friend Besnick is here now with us. Hey, Besnick. All of my friends. Johnny, are... hi, Johnny. Hi, hi. I'm good. Gabriel had mentioned that you know your models that you paint, that they're friends or that you spend time getting to know them. Can you share a little bit about that and how that's important in doing portraits? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I found that it's really tough for, for example, if I have a, a commission from a stranger that I've never known, if he just sent me a picture, I mean, uh, I, I'm not sure if the picture is the right way to, um, uh, I don't know if, if that's if that's the way that he really or she really lo looks like like in real life. So if you have the time to spend some time with your model, maybe have a coffee or a drink or have a conversation, you really know their. Uh, um, I don't know their expressions and how they laugh, how they cry, how whatever. You you can show that on the on the painting that I have spent time with this person here and I know her or him. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that, Johnny. We have a question in the chat over at Facebook uh, from Jose. And he wants to know, do you uh, do these uh, portraits in one setting, like uh, a la prima? Uh, most of the time, yeah. But if it's a bigger format, I would probably do it in two or even three sessions. But in a quarter seat, yeah, in one go. Yeah, I mean, there's occasional, you know, smoke break, make another cafe, come back to the painting. And, uh, and have a drink. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> a paint and sip. <laughs> or some more wine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and another cigarette. <laughs> now, Johnny, did you use... Um, for the eyebrows, that's your Van Dyke and Carbazol Violet. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? For what your eyebrows. eyebrows. Okay. Uh, it was uh, ivory black. Oh, still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. It's very soft. Thank you. Yep. It's very diluted. And I used a little bit of lavender on the cheeks too, but it doesn't show on the camera now.
Can you share uh, how being a model uh, for sculpture and for the atelier might have helped uh, your hunger for painting again? Yeah, it, it helped me so much because I I always listen to, to the critics of the teachers and uh, I was able to put myself in the position of a live mo a model, which was really tough at sometimes uh, because of the physical pain. And I mean, these guys are amazing. The models that do that every day for years to try and stay still in one position for 10 weeks, let's say. So, they got my full respect. They are awesome. And I don't know, it uh, helped me because I can see now what poses are difficult for, for the body, which are painful, which one you can hold for a long time, which not. That's it, I think. Was there a pose you that you did not enjoy? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> so for the lips, I started with uh, lavender. And now I'm putting a little bit of piemontite. So, but because they are already wet, I, I use a let, let's say heavy pigment. It's my brush is loaded with piemontite, so I just touch it and it's it spreads on its own. And then again, I clean my brush and softly. I push it around a, a little bit more. Maybe some perilene maroon. Chuck says it's amazing to watch her face come to life on the paper. Thank I you agree. so much. I see one thing immediately when I'm doing lips. I do it the opposite of how you do it. So I think I learned something major here. <laughs> I always go from the light to the dark instead of the dark to the light. Yeah. But you did it reverse of that. And I don't really like to make the contour just the inner line and they are fine. Have you added any new colors to your palette since your dot card? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm using the uh, very long maroon. It's I use it instead of spiral scarlet at some of my paintings. I think it's more more blo bloody, let's say. It's 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 more alive. That's great. I'm going to use it here on the ears. How damp is your paper right now? Now it's it's dry.
Okay, I'm gonna use the hair dryer again. Johnny, I was just reading what you said about your dot card. Uh, I guess it's the quote on the back of your dot card. And I wanted to read it out loud. It says, uh, I came across Daniel Smith in 2019 and I use them ever since. I love them because they can be smooth and subtle, but also rich and powerful with great texture, making my paintings come to life. This is my favorite part. I'm mostly focused on portraiture and figure and I concentrate mainly on the eyes and the lips rich and powerful, leaving the rest to be implied, smooth and subtle. I like to treat my subjects like jewels by adding some Prima Tech colors. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Johnny was also recognized uh, a must watch uh, artist under the age of 30. Yeah, from... Uh... I was uh, was the under thirty artist in Fabriano two thousand nineteen. Thank you, George Politis, for that. That that year, I met with John and um, Catherine from Daniel Smith, and it changed my my view of watercolor. I also find teeth really difficult to paint, but uh, if you don't put a lot of details, they look just fine. So now I did not nothing, just a shadow of ivory black on the, on the top part, and they look fine. Still with ivory blood, make, making the pupils. I think another great observation would be that even though a short period has passed since we started watching this portrait come to life, he's covered so much ground, yet <laughs> he's kept a steady pace. Have you noticed that? He, he doesn't rush it, he's taking his time. And by doing so, you can really see how the light and shadows play in his portraiture. Yeah, let's try it now and work on the hair a little bit so we bring some contrast too. And um, I'm gonna make her dark hair and I'm gonna use lamp black. Maybe I'm just going to wet a little bit the paper. It's a bigger brush. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. 
I appreciate seeing the portraiture, how the blacks are being read as the cool, which brings the warmth, helps bring it to life, that you're playing that warm cool against each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I always tr try to squint my eyes when I paint, so I can see the contrast a little bit be better. Too quiet in here. Chuck said, even though it's subtle, she looks very three dimensional. Thank you. You have a captivated audience. Very. <laughs> Hope so. Or everyone is sleeping. <laughs> no I way. Was my breath as you put the dark color because I know parts of the face are probably no, still wet. My breath as you put the dark color because I know parts of the face are probably. I didn't get the last part. Sorry. Sorry, I don't know why there was an echo. Um, I was saying as you put in the hair, I was holding mm -hmm. my breath because part of the face is probably still a little wet. No, no, no. It's dry. Okay. Yeah. I think we're all fascinated to see how you handle a single black note and how it's being brought as a silhouette, but powerfully. Nice.
Johnny George says in the chat, a uh, beautiful contrast coming. Thank you, George. He's with us in Zoom now. Awesome. And I think I might do the eyebrows a little bit more da darker, maybe. Yeah, Let, let's try that. With ivory black. That's better, yeah. Johnny, being that you are a younger watercolor artist, I know there are many artists out there that are enjoying following your art journey and your career path. Do you have any advice for artists who are just graduating or just starting their journey? Well, the, the one that always stuck with me was that just don't give up. I mean, it's a, it's a hard uh, profession. Uh, there is a lot of competition going on, but if you really like it and enjoy it, just do what you do and you will keep getting better and better and, and better. And that's the whole point. Just enjoy the process. Thank you. We have an interesting question on the Zoom side, actually. And BJ Boland is, is asking, why are you using uh, both lamp black and ivory black? Mm, well, I think that la lamp black is cooler for me. And for the hair, because it's more powerful, you can uh, make more with less time, let's say. And especially for for a demo, when you don't have a, a lot of time, just one color and you're basically done. Johnny, there's been more and more people jumping on the Zoom and jumping on the Facebook. Would you mind Johnny, there's been more people jumping on the Zoom? Would you mind showing the reference photo one more time? Yeah, sure. Okay, and the funny thing is that I haven't looked at it like a, a bit, like <laughs> not at all. I'm just going with the flow, let's say. Nice. So, yeah, this 
this can come from uh, imagination, right? So it, would it be safe to say that you start with your reference to get your drawing done, but yeah. then as you paint, you go more and more into expression? Yeah, right, right. She's so beautiful, you can look right into her eyes. Oh, let me use the hair dryer again for a little bit. Cool. I really enjoy the shape, that uh, kind of that negative shape image. Uh, on the side and the tops of this figure. It's a uh, very, very uh, elegant. Okay, I'm gonna move my camera a little bit closer. Come on, come on, okay. Wow. And I think I am done. I mean, there are only five minutes le left, so. Bravo. Amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful, Emma. Wonderful. Gorgeous. Again, what size was this, Johnny? Uh, quarter seat. Nice. 28 by 38 centimeters. Do you have anything planned for 2024, Johnny? Any events coming up or are you working on personal projects right now? Well, I mean, there is always the Fabriano in uh, Aquarello event uh, in April, at the end of April. Uh, personal projects, I mean, I want to do some, um, some new series, female again, fi figurative, but we, with a story, like a series, like 10 paintings or more, e, 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 if I can, May, maybe for a show, we will see, we will see. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we so loved having you on today. Thank you for sharing so much about yeah. yourself and your how you approach portraits. A beautiful painting. Thank, Thank you, you for everybody for tuning in today and for joining us on Friday lives, and we hope um, safe travels to John and Catherine. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Johnny. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wonderful. 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 Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Bye bye. 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 Bye